Salut everyone! In this video, I'm gonna talk about a news that went totally under the radar. And yes, Buzzight is right now, if you are using it, spying on you. But not spying in a bad way, yeah. Like, I, 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 I don't know if I can say that, but it, it's a good spying. Let's get into it. As always, let's start with a little bit of context. I have to say that I discovered the news while watching the podcast. I'm participating in almost like every month except last month, and I was still watching it. The podcast in question is a podcast from my buddy Vince FF. Uh, I'm going to put the link in the description below uh, if you want to go watch it. It's in French. They were talking about the Linux news, and I discovered this news, which was about... Universal Blue sharing their number about their derivative atomic uh, distro. We're going to look at the number first. I'm going to explain you like what those distros are all about real quick. But I think the numbers are really important. So in this post, George drops the news. We always strive to be as transparent as we can about all the stuff we make. Our inability to know just how large our community is, is something that annoyed me for quite some time. And, and, and I do agree with that. However, that information must be privacy respecting via an open process so we can verify what information is being donated. Fedora counts its users via the count me support. This data is made available to the community but has never been in a form that is easily consumable by false, aka it's a dump of CSV file, no chart. We feel like it's important to know how many People are using our stuff in anger, and so we have updating our website to reflect this data. We always have counted pools, but not as useful as knowing how many live systems there are. So let's take a look. So this is really important. This data is representing not the pool from the server, which is kind of like a, a, a not a really reliable data in a way, like there is multiple servers, and some people will just download the ISO, Sometimes just to reshare it again, or they will just like collectioning ISO. Yeah, I, I, I know some of those, some of those users, <laughs> you, you know what I mean? But there is also like other users who will just download it, install it, and then like leave it for whatever reason. What is important to understand here is that those numbers are actually the number of actual active installation of devices on the machine. So when you look at this graph, you can see that there is a huge increase of Buzzite user within the last three months. And, and this is good. Like I have to say, like this is, this is pretty impressive to see that within the last three months, they almost double almost double the number of active units. While when you compare to Bluefin and Aura, they have been like pretty like flat. So let me backpedal and, and try to show you what it's all about. First, you need to understand like the overall like conglomerate. Can I, can I say that? Like, like the overall like uh, land of distribution of like group of distribution, which are directly coming from the Fedora Atomic Distro. So the nomenclature is pretty easy. You have Fedora Silverblue, which is Fedora Atomic using GNOME. You have Fedora Kinoit, which is uh, Fedora Atomic using KDE. And if you want to go deeper, you're going to discover that there is a lot of different like atomic desktop provided by Fedora. You have also the Sui Atomic one, and the budgie atomic one. On this channel, I've been doing my due diligence and I've been reviewing the ones which I found was relevant toward like uh, Linux gaming in general. So the first one I tried at the beginning was Kinoid. And if you want to watch it, it's pretty easy. You go on my web page and you search here into the search bar and you will have like my actual video talking about Kinoid. So you can see like the ranking come up and uh, the actual like review itself. But I also cover another one like almost a year ago now, uh, which was Bazite. If I remember correctly, I was one of the first on YouTube to, to give like a, a proper review on Bazite. So there is like, I think like two streams. 
uh, one where I totally <laughs> broke the distro because I had no idea what I was uh, talking about. I think it was uh, this one here. I made a review, an up, an, a, a full like a review uh, as a, a small format here. And I also like retested it like around like six months ago when they did upgrade the scheduler because one of my big negative feedback was around like the scheduler they choose at the time I tried it, which was based on uh, System76 uh, scheduler. And now they have a way, way better one, which is just awesome uh, to, to be super clear. And four days ago, uh, I did a, a, a full live stream review on Bazite on the Steam Deck. So on my channel, I've been covering what Bazite and Kinoit in general really are all about. Now there is another universe based on those Fedora Atomic distribution. So they use the core and they make kind of like a fork, I would say. It's not really like nice to define them a, a, as this, but they had a lot, lot, lot of uh, new like packages, like optimization, and they are really working like on top of the core. Uh, Fedora Atomic distribution. And the one here, like the, the most I would say known is obviously Bazite, which is the one like oriented toward gaming and handheld. And you have two other one, like one is Aurora, which is I believe based on the Kinoit Fedora Atomic Distro. And you have also Bluefin, which is uh, based on the Silver Blue uh, Fedora Atomic Distro. So I think uh, now everybody understand everything. Bluefin, Universal Blue on GNOME, Aurora, Universal Blue on KDE, and Buzzite, uh, multiple option like type of desktop environment oriented toward gaming. So I believe they, they provide like GNOME and KDE, but they also provide like different like session to go directly into a Steam Big Picture, like SteamOS. Uh, via the Steam Deck. Now, what is really interesting is like if you had the Fedora Atomic within the mix, which are, as I explained to you, Silver Blue and Kinoit, those two one here, you can see that uh, the GNOME version is way more successful uh, than the KDE version here. And you can see, which is super impressive, like Bazite literally went up and above. And when you look like deeper into the number, you can tell that in seven months, the number of users using Bazite has been multiplied by five. It is insane. So I do believe that Bazite is becoming more and more a perfect gateway for a user who want to transform their PC or their handheld device into a, a, a gaming console. And the fact it's running on Linux, it's, it's just like amazing. Like I, I have to, to say to you guys, like I'm, I'm literally like losing my mind. Those numbers are super impressive. So in the grand scheme of thing, uh, it, it, it's not that crazy that only 25,000 devices are running Bazite because if you go back to the way the data is actually grabbed, every user out there who installed Bazite is going to be opt-in by default for this data. So how does it work? It's pretty clear. Uh, RPM OS3 is a package manager on the Atomic Distro. I hope I use the, the correct word. Uh, please let me know in the comment below if I made a mistake there. But from memory, RPM OS3 is a package manager. And you will have an adaptation of the classic DNF-based operating system, uh, the DNF count me measure, to anonymously report how long a system has been running without impacting the user privacy. So again, don't freak out. I do believe this is a good thing because sometimes we need more data uh, more data than, for example, like DistroWatch. Uh, is DistroWatch reliable? It's going to be a subject for another video, uh, which I already made, by the way. But uh, the, the real question here is like, how can we measure the actual like popularity of a distro within the 
real world realm. And personally, I, I do believe this is a good thing, but I, I would love also from their end uh, just to announce it and make sure that everybody is aware of it and maybe give the option to opt out after installing the distro. I, 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 I believe that if they explain exactly like as I explain it here, like, you know, it's anonymous, it will ping the server from time to time. You can disable it by typing this command here, right there. It would have been, in my opinion, just, just a little bit better for, you know, like keeping like the, the full trust uh, of the user. On the other hand, like, you know, they are not transmitting like any of your data, like this is totally private. But at the end of the day, just announcing the fact that they were doing it and giving the option to opt out would have been better. Uh, from my feeling, uh, most of the users who are using like Linux distro, they have a, a really like a great sense of community. And I'm pretty sure that the majority uh, will be already happy uh, to share the fact that they are using Bazite on their handheld or, you know, their HTPC, like a PC or even on their main PC. So I really wanted to share with you this news, guys, because it's, it's kind of like uh, give you like s some really important data here. And the, the most important data is the fact that if you look at the realm of the Fedora Atomic Distro, uh, whether it's the, uh, you know, original one or uh, the, the derivative, like the branch, uh, like Buzzite, the, the one which is really like gaining popularity, which is gaining traction, I wouldn't say exponential, but like really like a linear uh, level type of traction, which is just crazy. Uh, and, and I'm pretty sure like almost like unheard of is the gaming one. It is Buzzite. And, you know, whatever you think about Bazite, because I already share my, you know, point of view around Bazite, I think for all the Linux gamers out there, this is a great news. Because it means that within the realm of Linux, what is really pushing the traction towards the Linux adoption right now is gaming. And it's, it's insane because I've been saying that as a... Uh, prediction for the last three years and watching becoming a reality even if it's still a small scale but it, it's happening guys it's happening user with handheld because i do believe like this traction number is really related to handheld most of the time uh, they, they, they don't want to use windows they want to try the alternative and when you see like the curve going like like this right it kind of tell you that those users they just like didn't try and left the bot they are still in it and more users are coming up and enjoying linux so man uh th that's a great news for me uh, i i know some of you are gonna be like losing it toward uh, the overall like you know telemetry privacy uh but for me it's uh yeah it's, it's a non-problem it's, it's literally a non-problem. If you want to disable it, you go. Uh, I'm going to put the link in the description below on how to disable it. It's it's one, one line of command. Uh, but I would say, like, if, if you are actually running Bazite, make sure you don't disable it because we want those numbers to grow. And those numbers, uh, you know, in one, two years, three years from now, they're going to be huge. And all the PC hardware manufacturer, all the, the producer of uh, video game, everybody involved with the industry from the hardware and software like standpoint, they, they're going to have to take those numbers in consideration if they want to make sure like their product sells. Simple as that. And uh, this is great, guys. This is great for the Linux community. This is great for the end user to have access finally uh, to an easy distro to install and you know freedom uh, like just linux freedom in general uh, th th this is a win-win for everyone guys so yeah that's it that's all for this video thank you very much for watching i want to thank again all the members of la creme de la creme club whether you're on patreon or uh, a youtube membership 
You guys are the best for supporting me financially. Uh, I don't know to say it again. Like, thank you very much. And uh, yeah, until then, have a great rest of your day and see you in the next one. Bisous, bisous.